Well, hello, grade three. We are going to do our next stage in our animation in the life cycle of our chosen flower. Today, we're going to talk about blooming. So when we are designing our plant to bloom, we're going to need to first find a whole bunch of pictures. And the goal, remember, is the animation of the life cycle of a plant. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it has to always be the same kind of animation. So this time, when we animate blooming, we're going to get a whole bunch of photos and transition from one photo to another. So I've already downloaded some photos and I want to show you how to do that first. And then we'll go into putting them in the scratch and then um, setting them all up inside of the program and adding the code. So the first thing you're going to do is go to Google and you're going to Google the name of your flower and then buds, because that's really what we're looking for is the budding process of our sunflower or whatever flower you choose. And you wanna go through and look at all of those images. So we click on images and look at all the different ones. And we wanna pick out some of them that look like the flower is just first starting to be just a bud. And then it starts to open up a little bit, maybe a little bit more. And you just pick out all the different pictures that you like like this is a different one and here's a different one, but let's say we wanted um, this picture here. We would click on it and then I'm gonna right click on it and then I'm gonna click save as and then save it in a folder where I can find it. But I'm gonna name these one, two, three, four, five, etc. So that way I know what order in which the picture should be when I put them in the scratch and when I wanna do my animation. So let's say we downloaded all those pictures. So you can see I've already pulled in like four of the pictures. So I'm gonna go and do number five to show you the process. So I'm just gonna go and click on upload, which is this top little button here. And then I'm gonna find my pictures and you can see I've labeled them all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I decided to go with eight. So I'm gonna open up number five and you'll notice that it is not the right size. I wanna make it fill the screen like all the other ones. So I'm gonna go into costumes and then I'm gonna to try to click and make it bigger, but you'll notice I can't. To make it bigger, I have to click on this button here that says convert to vector. That will allow me to change the size of the picture. And now it gets this blue box with these little markings on it. And I'm gonna just drag it bigger and what are the things I found is you have to might have to drag it off to the screen a little bit and then drag it bigger to get it to fill the whole screen there and position it so I can see it and it takes a nice view and fills the whole screen. So I'm going to go ahead and do all the other ones and you will do all the pictures that you have and we can see down here we have all these different sprites each one being a different stage so to speak of the growth of the blooming of our flower. So let's do that. I'm going to add all the other ones. And there we go, number eight. So now I have all eight of them added. You notice number eight is the one that's on top and I can't see any of the other ones. So we're going to write code to make them all transition from one to the other. So I'm going to go to picture one and we're going to go into the code. And the first thing I want to do is on all of them except for picture one, when I click, click the green flag, I wanna make them hide. So the block is when green flag clicked, and I'm gonna to go to looks, and I'm gonna click on hide. So that way when the green flag is clicked, I want it hidden. Now, the quick way of doing this is you can actually take this code and copy it down to each one of these blocks. Now, I made it really big, so it makes it harder to do. I'll make it smaller again and it's easier to just drag and click them on. So there's one, there's another one. Do all of these. Great, so now all of them should have the code that when I click on the green flag, it's hidden. So now when we click on the green flag, they will all hide except for the first one. So now we want to get them to transition from image to image. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to go into looks again. And what we want to do is use one of the effects. Now the effect we're going to do 
is ghosting. And what that's going to do is it's going to take our image and make it fade out. So let's see what that does. I'm going to click on ghost by 25. And you see how it gets lighter? If I make the number higher, 100, it makes it go away. So I want to change the effect so it fades out. But I don't want to do it all in one shot. I want it to do it slowly over time. So to make that happen, I need a loop. So I'm going to go into control. I'm going to do a loop. And I'm, let's say I wanted to do it in 10 times, increments of 10. And I'll put a little pause in it. And let's say I want it to happen over 0.25 seconds. So that's going to be about two and a half seconds as each stage goes through. And then I have to change this number. So we're going to change the effect by 10. Now, you notice my picture's gone. That's a problem. So I got to go to looks again and go to ghosting. And I want to clear the graphic effect. And that will eliminate the graphic effect. And that's the first thing I want to do when I click on the green flag. I want this graphic effect to go away to make sure I start clear. And then I want to wait, fade it out until it has completely faded out to zero. Let's see if I got it. And look at that. It fades away. So now it's all gone. But how do I know to do the next picture? Well, I have to broadcast a message, create an event, so that way the code knows it's ready to do the next picture. So I'm going to broadcast a message. And the message I'm going to broadcast is start2. So I'm going to broadcast start2. And that's it for that one. So now I'm going to go over to 2. And I want to do the same kind of thing. I want to do the same kind of code. But I want to do it when I receive the message start2. And I also want to show it. So this is going to be a little tricky. Because first, the ghosting has to start at 100%. And then it has to um, reduce down to 0 and then has to fade back out again. So we're going to fade in and fade out. And we're going to probably want to fade in quicker than we fade out. So let's go ahead and see if we can experiment with this a little bit. I'm going to put some code in here. So this is what we now have. When I receive the start to message, when it's time to start the second picture, I'm going to set the ghost effect to 100. Now, it's not change ghost effect. It's set ghost effect. So under looks, we can see that there are two different ways of changing an effect. One is a change and one is a set. We want to set it to 100 so it's completely faded out. Then we want to make sure we show it because otherwise we're never going to see it. Then we're going to put in our repeat loop and we're going to repeat it 10 times. You could choose to make a different repeat. We're going to do the same weight so it's consistent. And this time we're going to change the ghost effect by minus 10. Then we're going to make it fade back out. So we're going to repeat 10 more times. And we're going to change the ghost effect by positive 10. So I'm going to go ahead and see what that looks like. So we'll see it from the first picture. There's the first picture. It fades out. And we can see the second picture fades in. And then it fades out. So now we have all of this code that we have to put on all the other pictures. However, fortunately for us, the only thing we're going to have to change is the broadcast messages. So I'm going to go in to my events and I'm going to broadcast another message at the very end of this and say new message start three. So now I have all this code. It's all ready to go. I can copy all of this right over to the third picture. So I'm going to take my picture, my code. Now you might make it smaller by using this minus button. It makes it a little bit easier to copy over. I'm going to copy it over to number three. So you see it stays on number two. But then when I go to number three, now I have all of the code that I had before.
Oh, I'm missing my other piece. I must have not copied that one over. And copied it over. There it is. So now I have both pieces copied over. When green flag clicked hide and all the other code from before. But this I want to now change from when I receive start two to when I receive start three. And then this one I want to change from broadcast start three to new message start four. So I'm going to copy all these over to all the other messages and all the other pictures and we'll see what we have. Okay, so now I've copied it all over for all the different pictures. Now the last picture, I'm going to do something a little bit different because I'm not going to do a ninth picture so I don't need to broadcast another message. And the question is, do I actually want it to fade away again? And I don't think I do. So I'm going to take this part and get rid of that. So that way the last picture will be left on the screen. And then um, if we were to restart it, it would hide again for us when we click the green flag. So let's go ahead and give this a try and see what the whole thing looks like. And you can see it's just fading from picture to picture. And you could do this with any set of pictures. It doesn't have to be flowers. We just happen to be using this for our animation, but you could do a slideshow of any kind of set of pictures you would like. And finally, the last picture. And then it stays. So, that is the whole process of creating our animation. Um, I think it'll be fun. I can't wait to see what you do. See you next time.